welcome back to the third episode of The Artist. This has been an intriguing and learning conversation with Ajay, Kaustav, Ranjani and Vignesh. And I'm going to just continue from where we left off last time, which is, I just asked a question. My question was, yes, there could be times when what you learn from machine learning and signal processing disproves a certain perception or a belief system. Uh, and Kaustav said, yes, let's dig, dig deeper. So I'm going to pass it on to Kaustav and say, tell, tell us more about it. Sure. So uh, we exactly took this exploratory approach without any end assumption, mm. trying to dig into the Raga space, what we kind of call a Raga space, because uh, see the Raga recognition problem basically in principle makes it a classification problem that every performance can be tagged to one Raga, mm. but a Raga performance is a bigger thing. So every chunk of a phrase can also have a mapping to a different raga, which was totally unexpected to us. Okay. So for example, when we were exploring this space, uh, I think uh, Vignesh, could you please play the raga wise demo? And then this will fall into very uh, correct context. So we, we can take yes. a few minutes to go over this video and then come back to uh, this. So just to put this everything in context, we are going to demonstrate you an application called Raga Wise that we all developed about six years ago as a part of a hackathon project. This is a real time Raga recognition system, which uh, corroborates few of the techniques we have developed, but it also addresses a very deep rooted musical question that is Raga recognition a one to one matching problem or can we also explore something unknown, which was mm. not obvious to us, but this data has led us to a different kind of exploration. So can we have the video please? Hello everyone, all of us are working as researchers in Music Technology Group in Barcelona, Spain as a part of Comp Music Project. We are here to introduce you to Raga Wise, a system that we developed as a part of a music hackathon event at Ismir 2015 in Malaga, Spain. Raga Wise is a real-time Raga recognition system which is itself a core topic of research in Hindustani classical music. And the system has been uh, developed to work on modern day web browsers in real time. Okay, so now let's have a quick demonstration of the system. So here is a demonstration of Raga voice. I'll sing Rag Bhupali to demonstrate the different visualizations we have implemented in Raga voice. So first I need to choose a tonic which I have already chosen as D and the Tanpura is playing. So let me start singing. Ga -re -dha. Re ga da pa ga pa da sa sa da pa ga re ga sa. We have already seen. The salience of Rag Bhupali is high and other ragas which are having a height in the salience curve are similar in a sense that that uses the similar swaras and swara transitions. So one good demo of this would be a raga pair Rageshri and Nadhero. So for that I'll start afresh. So I'll take a phrase Gamma Re which is common in both these ragas. Gamma Re 
So you can see both the ragas are having the same salience. So now the deciding factor would be the next phrase. So if I sing Ga Ma Da So we see Nadbhero salience is high. This is more indicative of that. And if I sing Sa Ga Ma Da So then Rageshri now the salience is high. So it depends on a gradual note by note unfolding of Raga. So if you sing one note and go to the second, third and gradually unfold the Raga, the space is visible. So this is an additional insight we are trying to get through Raga wise. Oh, that was beautiful. Uh, Kausi, you have anything to add to that? Yes, please. So we basically wanted to, so this was a finding by chance. We, we didn't expect this to happen, but this very sincerely changed my insight towards Raga music because I am also a student of music and while I perform, I used to have a very narrowed vision. For example, when I sang Rageshri, I never thought of maybe Ahir Bhairav or exactly. Nad Bhairav, but it has components. So this one too many mappings and later when I kind of dig more into the psychology of things, then we find found out that there is this mental schema that a musician has and also the expectancy of the listeners that we always try to meet. So it's a dialogue between the performer and the listener and listeners always have an expectancy. And we sometimes do adhere to meet that, but also give pleasant surprises. And that's why the maestro's music is always so exciting and we go for them. So this is, this is the additional insight. So raga recognition is not a one-to-one -one matching problem but kind of the technical boundaries of the ragas or maybe from one phrase, what all are the avenues that you can diverge to? So that broadens the outlook as a performer. And these are the information which were otherwise unavailable theoretically. So from the data with these tools, these are kind of popping up. And we are always saying like this dynamic updation of the likelihood, uh, we musicians should also like, at least at I exercise that, I pause after each phrase and try to see what are the avenues that I can explore and why is it apt for me to take this route which establishes this rag or maybe also not to expose or not to explore the rag like for example the greatest example that you gave. So it's the intention of the musician or the mental schema what we have learned, what is the local context that we are building the performance and these are the insights we got from the exploratory approach where we were very open ended we didn't want to recognize the rag, but to understand the space. Yeah, and then there's also I guess. Uh, um, the collective sense of possibility uh, or yes. probability rather that's right word. collective sense of probability right so uh, a, a rag actually. Um, lives in that uh, sense of probability that we are matching. So if there's an audience, if there's me, I sing one phrase, for example, your first phrase. Now we all mm -hmm. collectively kind of, or there could be exceptions, exception kept aside, many of us together will say, this is the raga. The actual phrase like, right. the ha may not even come. So you don't know, but yes. there is a consciousness exactly. that leads us in a, in a certain direction, which is, where actually the raga lives uh, rather than in anywhere else. Right. right, right. And also we can lend from many other uh, allied ragas which are not even, so for example, there is a theory of circle of thoughts that many of these ragas came about in Murchana Paddhati. So we know that say Hamir, Kamot, Kedar, Chayana, these are all Kalyan, Ang ragas. So there are similarities, but maybe some Bhairavi group ragas or Kafi group ragas, exactly. which are got obtained from Murchana Paddhati. So maybe if I change the sa, some phrase of Kafi Ang Rag may lead to a very innovative phrase in Kalyan Ang Rag. And Kamaka. we just don't the that. The mean, yes. for example. Even the mean doesn't yes, come up. Yes. So this, whole, this also opens up the concept of what allyship is, right? Because I think yes, uh, yes. what is the light ragas are also, I'm just trying to also see how we can rethink even musicology, you know, from this learning. Right. We have limited space yeah. in our head to understand what is an allied raga, for example. We have probably two pattern recognition systems inbuilt in how we say allied. But if we expand it, like, you know, yeah. one of the problems that, for example, in Carnatic, I will say, is that uh, the way we sing the Madhimavati Ri is yeah. identically the way we sing Todi Ga. Now, Todi mm -hmm. and Madhimavati have more relationships. But can we now say right. there is actually a relationship because they are aligned? Yes. Is Madhimavati. 
ஒரே and very interestingly uh, this this mohana sits right in between uh, hari kamboji and uh, shankara barna kalyani is still a bit away from it okay. and then uh, you have all this karahara priya and a few of its uh, cohort ragas sitting in one place and then you have all this confused ragas like mukhari bhairavi all of those sitting very confused also so <laughs> it's it's actually very interesting yeah i think one of the problems is also that right so one of the problems is uh, the way we have systematized in karnataka at least the way we have categorized um is not in the way for example the way we experience mm. so one of the problems has been in, in theorization is uh, in a way i would say what you're doing is far more natural theorization if i may as a musician respond than what we have done in in schema for example the thart system or the melakarta system which has been actually a non has been actually the word i like to use is synthetic theorization uh and we have said practice should be engulfed into the synthetic theorization in some manner uh but when you come mm-hmm. from your point where your source material is actually the signal which is practice fundamentally then the theorization is coming from i mean the grammar is coming from poetry so to speak in the, in you know as an analogy in many ways right so right. i think it also opens right. the book of saying for example from what ranjan he said should it really matter whether it hari kambuji or or for example uh, kalyani or shankara varam were father figures or mother figures to this raga um whereas would i look would i rather look at saying partners of mohanam in the way the gandhara of the mohanam is and say they are a group so can we regroup ragas in a way that we don't normally group ragas i'm just picking up from what you're saying and uh, saying that this opens up a lot of avenues for re music rethinking musicology of ragas itself just to bring back where we all started and spent some time for example the example you gave of madhyamabati and chori if we take out the tonic normalization from aspect the aspect then these two will be recognized as the same rag exactly. exactly that's exactly so that's very interesting right mm-hmm. so if you took the tonic normalization yeah. no, they, the, the, the system will say it's the same thing there is no difference i mean yeah. i'm not sure maybe ranjini yeah. will say it's different in pulse she may she make uh, <laughs> the difference in pulse So I'm just trying to look at the graph if if actually there's a difference or not. <laughs> Maybe I'll share the screen if it is. I will send you a recording and you can tell me if if time makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tonic normalization. I have two questions yes. here regarding um, uh, material. That is your data material. Is um, one is was there a difference between analyzing raga data from the voice these are the multiple instruments and was there a selection there? to what does text do language text speech to your data can you address these two issues ajay yeah this ranjani has extensively worked with text actually so she will probably elaborate on text but then so is so i just to abstract it again here so in signal processing and machine learning we always go to a representation so we start from audio and we go to a representation that can that is not too noisy when i say noise noise is anything that we don't want to kind of extract Mm-hmm. uh it 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 does it's not bad or good or anything it's just that just just that uh so we go to a representation that has I, uh, all the i just want sorry. to say for scientists when they use the word noise they are only describing the kind of data they are not giving it's not an adjective of quality go ahead yes yes <laughs> it's not it so for me it is anything that uh is not to be extracted out i mean that's not what i'm looking for essentially just that it i mean if if for example if i am trying to do percussion separation uh the melody is noise for me because i don't want melody in that so we just i mean that's just an example so mm-hmm. so so when we go to a representation uh we want to kind of get to a representation uh from which we can extract this uh kind of information right so for that for pitch we use this melody contours as the main representation uh those those are the the, the wiggly lines that you would see uh, typically on uh, any of these recordings so so as soon as we choose a representation then uh, then the whole idea of like whether we are starting from voice or from uh, like say uh, say from text or any of these uh, are like secondary immediately because we choose a representation we try to get all these other signals uh, into the same representation 
so that we can extract out uh, information out of it. And I mean, that, that's, that's, I think, uh, so Ranjini can probably elaborate further on text. So there, so audio, we convert them into pitch contours and then we do all the analysis on that. So it doesn't matter for you whether it's a voice or instrument? No, I mean, as long as, so the, the only complexity is if there are multiple instruments, this extracting out this representation itself is inexact because hmm. there is a lot of interaction yeah. between instruments. So the note that- yeah, I'll just add so, a very yeah. small point. Good, yeah, good. Just because of the questions of instruments, for example, uh, the Sarod, Sitar, this kind of plucked instrument, because the signal is a wide band spectrum signal. So then the reliability of the stationarity becomes a problem. So mostly for Hindustani music, the vocal data gives more reliable signal because the continuity of the signal, the stationarity that is maintained because of the spectrotemporal character of the signal itself. It's nothing to do with the source, but a plucked instrument signal is little uh, noisy in terms of stability. Because the it's, way it's, it's plugged, the sound itself, yeah. it's a wideband signal, is very difficult to pinpoint a single frequency because of the presence of other noisy data. Right. But for example, Sarangi is a very good instrument to uh, extract signal from. It can act as good as a vocal data. So it's interesting that I mean, if you look at the kind of instruments that give you uh, difficult data or, or you know a lot of noise, um, they are of a certain kind together, right? Aren't they? Right. They're yeah. certain plucking. They're all plucking instruments, aren't they? So they are plucking. Yes, yes. They are I'll... a lot of them. I mean, the basic the, the the limitation is of the tool here. It's it's not really of the signal itself. It's just that we don't have tools to analyze that uh, signal okay. very well. So so I'll put it this way. Uh, so so we have instruments which are having different uh, what we call ASR. Uh, attack sustain release right the sustain mm -hmm. amount of many of these instruments is very small and and right. that is where the limitation of our tools ah, come in okay i get it okay. right okay. and and uh, and in terms of when you're talking of text there are two aspects i can think one is the lyrics aspect uh, but because much of our uh, music i wouldn't say uh, at least at this point since we are concentrating on melody the lyrics has not yet kicked in of course it uh, makes a big deal wherein you want to have the lyrics and uh, know where exactly you want to make a break point right you cannot uh, sing uh, you know extending a particular uh, syllable over something else and it leads to a, a nonsense meaning in in the listener that that's a different aspect of it but when we're talking of text here, probably uh, what we are looking at is in terms of notation of uh, the melody itself, the melodic contour. And uh, yeah, then there are different challenges uh, depending, we we, uh, we did a different analysis on prescriptive, descriptive transcriptions, which is useful and uh, whatever is generally obtained as notations in many of these books is also quite indicative. Uh, they form some sort of skeletal structure. Uh, we shouldn't be actually putting it away, though many of us as musicians would say, okay, this does not have all the information that we want. But from a machine learning perspective, we do see it does give some decent accuracies. Uh, very interesting that was. Uh, and uh, and if you now, of course, go into the actual description uh, descriptive transcription that you get uh, from the data itself, uh, then of course uh, it's it's a totally different ball game, right? Uh, yeah. So so yeah. Anthony, uh, one more thing. Uh, I was also wondering to ask that uh, when you extract features from an audio signal, say from from a music signal, how much does lyrics being there? Somebody saying lyrics like the phonetics of it, the, the formants or, you know, when every syllable is different in the way you say it. How does that affect the signal and how does that? Yeah. Oh, that, that's a very interesting question. Thanks know, for that, asking. That's what, I, that's what I was curious about. That's what I was so, curious. so we had this little experiment that we did. Okay. It was a part of a different, uh, uh, I was doing a different experiment and what we did is we extracted only the pitch contour, did some modifications to it. And then we had a whole lot of people doing, uh, uh, you know, uh, listening test and evaluating. But what happened is just extracting the pitch, okay, and listening to it does not give the same feeling as the actual one. So, so I have had many listeners wherein if I just extract the pitch, put back the voice onto it, uh, similar to an alapna, they say this is something has gone wrong here. Show me the original. And when we go back to the original, it's perfectly fine. Hey, he's singing fine there. I'm saying I'm just picking up the pitch that is there. Uh, no, it's different. So, so there is there is something to it which we have not captured while going into this. Uh, I'll say a single lens view of when we are talking of uh, predominant melody, there is probably something that we have missed, uh, but more or less it captures it. So we are going ahead with it. That That is my viewpoint after that experiment. Uh, yeah, others can disagree or <laughs> add on to it. Uh, and, and also, I mean, so we've been using predominant melody, the term quite a bit 
I just want to clarify that when you are looking generally at Indian art music, you have multiple instruments playing the same thing over each other. Predominant melody is the melody of the instrument that you want to predominantly extract. Exactly. Okay. So you have in Carnatic music, you have violin and voice together playing the same thing at at a majority number of times. So extracting the predominant melody, predominant melody is the instrument, the melody of the instrument that you want to extract the pitch of. Interesting. Okay. Thank you very much for staying with us for this episode. We'll come back. There's going to be one more episode of talking music science.